So this is a quick video showing the uh, Helicopters SX-110 radio that I got. I get all these radios at an estate sale, so I picked the SX-110 first because it seemed to be the cleanest of the bunch. Um, didn't do anything when I powered it up, had no, uh, no, no noise, like no hiss coming out of it. You could hear that the audio amp was kind of working, but, uh, but apart from that, it didn't do, it didn't do anything. So just another shot of it, it was fairly clean. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good candidate. Underneath it was all original. You can see all the original capacitors. So first thing I did was go to the Boot Anchor website and get the documentation for it. Um, then I got the schematic and had it uh, printed out on a really large piece of paper and just spent a while trying to figure out how it all worked. Once I got that, the first thing I decided to do was check the tubes. So I borrowed my friend Ray's uh, tube tester, a real nice one. And I also downloaded all the uh, uh, data sheets for the different types of tubes that are in it. I also built one of those uh, inline current limiter things so that I wouldn't blow the thing up when I uh, when I first powered it up. So then the next thing to do was get the voltage chart and uh, start measuring voltages on all the tubes. I used this as a good excuse to go and buy a new fluke meter because all the junky ones I had here kept giving different results. So I took all the information from the voltage charts and started just uh, measuring things and recording it and trying to figure out what was good and what was bad. Uh, and as I started doing it, I realized that there was a couple of spots where there was some really strange voltages, um, particularly on the grids to the uh, uh, to the uh, IF section. All the stuff there in yellow was really weird. How it kept getting these 73 volts, as you can see here, 70 volts, and I was expecting to get like uh, you know like 9 volts or 5 volts or something like that. So I knew something was fishy in and around here. So I started you know shotgunning stuff by changing resistors and, and capacitors and things like that and uh, slowly work my way through it. Well, here we go. I'm going to take out all those old capacitors and put the new ones in. Uh, like I did the voltage testing before and there's some really weird stuff. Like I'm supposed to have 9 volts and I'm getting 70 volts. I'm supposed to have 15 volts and I'm getting 73 volts. And things are just nasty and it's all in the IF part so it kind of makes sense because the AF part is working you can hear the noise and stuff so I'm just gonna take a copy of this in case I screw something up so I can see all the capacitors that are in there I'll take some pictures of it and then with my new fluke meter I've been testing and then here's all the new capacitors that are gonna go in and I've got the power supply kit for the uh, filter caps as well but I'll hold off on that for now so here goes so these are just sort of the before shots, so I had a, a record of where all the old capacitors were in case I screwed something up, I could go back and uh, could go back and cross-reference it. So once I had that all decided or figured out which parts I needed, then I put the order in for the new capacitors. My order of capacitors came in today from just radio capacitors. So we're gonna, uh, I'll put those in, check the voltages again. And then I got a whole bunch of uh, resistors that they had on sale, which seemed like a pretty good deal. And I got my helper here. So it's kind of funny. Here's the first one. The tiny, tiny Chief 1 microfarad is replaced by this little tiny thing here, which is like actually 630 volts. That's just the, all the old capacitors I took out. Well, I replaced all the capacitors and the audio amp, which had no voltage before, is now working. But all the other voltages are way too high, like there's 70, 90 volts on the catheter. So the one thing left to replace is that uh, filter capacitor, the silver can. So I've got my hole here. I'm going to put a terminal strip in here, tie them back to this ground. And then after I do that, I give up, then I'm going to have to ask for help, because every resistor I check tests okay, and all the capacitors except for the ceramic fixed ones and uh, you know the variable ones have been replaced, so I'm running out of parts to replace, so I'll keep you posted. Just a couple more shots of all the capacitors that were replaced out, and like I mentioned, the only thing I kept were those brown ceramic ones and the ceramic uh, variable uh, capacitors for the tuning section. Well, I replaced the filter caps with brand new ones. And I'm 
unfortunately. I'm still getting my first IEF thing. I'm supposed to be getting like 9 volts here. I'm getting 70. I'm still getting 70. And on this one, in 5, I'm supposed to get 9 volts. I'm getting 71. Nothing's changed. Insane. On this one here, I'm supposed to be getting 5 volts on pins 3 and 5, and I'm getting. Uh, 70.4 73 73 so I don't know it's got to be a tube okay well as I mentioned I did everything I replaced the capac the uh, filter capacitors and literally every other capacitor and I'm putting it around here and I still can't figure it out so I found a table for another radio the SX90 something but it has the same, uh, it's the same radio, just different panel. And it has resistance readings. This is from a Sam's thing. But, uh, so I started poking around doing the resistance readings and things just weren't working right. And after fooling around with it, I, I, did, I did some testing on this, the sensitivity knob for the ABC. And it's dead, like completely dead between the the two terminal the center terminal and the pot that it's it, it, it's wide open there's nothing going on so it's an open circuit so if you look at the diagram for that pot the 10k pot here where is it right there um if there's no if there's no resistance here um it's open and when it's open it's in standby so all of these lines here that i'm getting my 70 volts on I'm getting 70 volts up there because there's nothing drawing them down to ground. There's no 10K pot to adjust the, the sensitivity. So I'm really hoping that's what's wrong with this because uh, I tell you, this is a lot harder to do in real life than it is to watch these guys on YouTube a little bit. I'm gonna run out and get a pot tomorrow uh, and hopefully I've got this radio fixed. So I couldn't find that uh that you know the pot with a switch on the back so i did a pot i got the pot and i put this to switch here for now and i so what i've done so far is replaced every single capacitor and like probably 15 resistors the power resistors here um the cans like the electrolytic capacitors uh and it's never worked, it didn't make any noise. And now that I've done this one change here and fixed this $3 potentiometer, check this out. I'm Alan Fulget from Sobeys. There are many reasons to shop Sobeys. For instance, if we see more than two customers in one line, we open another cash. Plus, we always have great weekly specials. This week at Sobeys. It seems like a real shame, but I gotta pull that uh, Howley Crafter sticker off in order to align it, but I'll do that uh, at a later time. Well, that's it for that one. I'm gonna uh, align it, clean the knobs and things, and then move on to these two here. 
uh, SX-130 and an HT-37 transmitter.